Hi everybody, Brian Beeler coming to you from the storage review lab today. Actually more accurately coming from my desk connected to the lab over a remote desktop. We're taking a look today at the Intel Solid State Drive Toolbox, which is their application for managing SSDs. Uh, this is version 3.5.12. Anyone that's used an Intel drive before and the toolbox will notice that Intel hasn't done a whole lot over the years to change the toolbox look and feel very similar, um, but still gets the job done on core functionality. Across the top here, you can see we've got this, uh, this drive in, that's the 545S. We've got the recently reviewed 665P loaded in, in this other slot. Now this one's a little interesting. We put that one in just to highlight one small feature difference that's uh, uh, available there. And then all the other SSDs that we've got in the system are all just sort of little black squares off to the side with not much information available to them. Um, we can see the drive, the firmware, and the used space, but that's about it. So let's go back here. When we take a look at, uh, at the 545, we see first off the capacity, the life remaining. We've barely just rubbed the tip off of that eraser and drive health. From this main screen, we can dive in here to see additional details on the drive. Not something that the end user is gonna really worry too much about. Maybe in a troubleshooting scenario, you might need some of these values. One thing that's a little tricky is to navigate back home. It's intuitive because it's a house, but it's really teeny little button off to the side. So you've got to use that to get back. Of course, like any of these tools, we'll have a, a smart readout too, uh, which again will have a lot of the diagnostic information, which is useful. There's not an export of this from this view, unfortunately, but uh, there we have it. Now, as we look at the capabilities of the tool, Probably the most interesting will be the firmware update and then the SSD optimizer. Here's where we can run the, the trim piece, uh, which is fine. The best course of action, though, is going to be just to run it on a schedule. Intel recommends weekly. You could do it more often if you want to. Uh, this goes pretty quickly. We can go ahead and hit it here. It'll say several minutes, but uh, it normally goes off relatively quickly. Now while this is running, we can still take a look at and interact with other uh, features. The one thing we can't do though is switch drives. So anytime something's happening, you can't bounce around to other drives in the system. So that thing that said it would take a few minutes is done already. The drive is very lightly used, so that's not too bad. Like other tools, Intel's got a, a quick diagnostic scan we can run. It doesn't really show a whole lot. Uh, the Intel tools are very, um, Spartan may not be the right word, but uh, uh, shows just enough information. We're, we don't need to run through this whole thing, but just so you get a feel for how this works. They of course have a full diagnostic scan if you wanna run a deeper scan and a secure erase function. We've got a partition on here. Like most drive tools, you'd have to blow away the partition, then you can run your secure erase. In this case, we do have a firmware update. Um, we will come back to that in just a moment and save that for the end. Intel also has a soft a system tuner view, which can provide some uh, useful information on how to tune the system, but you know, not really uh, anything entirely helpful in terms of the SSD in this system, in the system itself. And then we've got a system information tab that's got all sorts of information on uh, the the PC, Windows version, CPUs inside, all that sort of thing. So let's actually go back home because the one thing that's interesting here that's different for the 665P is when we go into the optimizer, it's got this option down here, this clear internal cache. So if you remember from the review, if you read it, uh, the 660P and 665P both have dedicated SLC NAND that acts as more or less a buffer in front of the QLC. So QLC is great because it's cost effective, but it's not real high performant. So in our review, for instance, where we normally uh, look at a, a drive, take 5% of a drive's capacity as the, the working area for performance tests, with QLC drives, we drop that down to 1%. 
so that we really target the cache performance because once we flow outside of that, if we run any of our heavier workloads, if we run even a small SQL workload with a database that's larger than, in this case, 12 gig, it'll, uh, it, well, it'll probably crash or we'll see, uh, see lackluster performance. That's okay. That's not the point of this drive. The point of this drive is to be cost effective and still give uh, mainstream workloads and, and end users a good performance profile at a reasonable price. You'll see a lot of these drives in low cost bundles, notebooks, you know, like your 899 special at, at Best Buy or whatever. Anyway, what you can do if you're concerned about the performance is run this, this guy. It'll flush the cache uh, and, and free that up for new data. The only problem is that it takes a very long time to run this. And uh, that's just because you're taking that 12 gig of, of SLC and dumping it to the QLC in a, in a long write, and it's just going to operate at a, a, at, a, at a slow rate. But if you're transitioning workloads or doing things uh, back and forth, and you know that this will be useful for you, you can come in here and, and run that. For now, though, let's go back to our drive that needs a firmware update and just work through that process, see how it goes. And it's already identified the selected SSD will be updated to eh, version 4C of the firmware. So we'll go ahead and click update and see what happens. It's going to make sure that we're smart and then we've backed everything up, which we certainly have not done because this is a lab and we'll risk it. So we'll run the update. And it'll go ahead and uh, work through this process. It'll require a reboot. Uh, if you had multiple drives in your system, this would be a one at a time sort of thing. Uh, we will go ahead, let it reboot, and then we'll uh, pick back up on the process. Our system has come back online now, and we've relaunched the SSD toolbox. We no longer have that firmware alert down here on this guy. And there we go, it confirms that the current SSD or the selected SSD has the current firmware, all is well. And um, if we went and hit this, it would launch the um, Intel support site where we could go and, and see if there's another firmware available. But uh, for now, we're good. We might want to come back and run the optimizer again just for the fun of it to uh, make sure this drive is as fresh as can be. But uh, firmware is, is installed. Whatever patches and updates were available have been made, and uh, now we're ready to rock and roll again. So that's a quick tour through the SSD toolbox. Overall, it, it's not as pretty as Samsung's or even WD's for that matter, but it's functional. It gets the job done, and frankly, at the end of the day, that's what most users are going to care about. Intel could polish this a little bit more, could make it a little more... Uh, current and um, and and pretty uh, like some of the others, but uh, again, as you'll see in in some of the subsequent videos as we continue to work through these drive management solutions, it gets a heck of a lot worse. So for now, we'll uh, we'll move on and uh, get to work on additional videos on the other systems. And uh, appreciate your time.